Greetings and welcome back to room 303 AP English, the Roberts Lecture. We are in uh, the poetry section. We are now turning to Sherman Alexie's On the Amtrak from Boston to New York City. You can uh, roughly uh, qualify this as around 2006 for a publishing date. Now, this is a very controversial poem for a number of reasons. Obviously, right away we're going to point out that this is going to contain some language that is offensive, so we'll point that out right away. We, uh, of course, in 303 are always challenging ourselves to respect the ideas that are being presented in texts even though they may be challenging to us. Um, Alexei's uh, um, work is really important for us. 1966 born, he is an indigenous American novelist, short story writer, poet. He's also a great filmmaker, and I hope that once you've been introduced to uh, some of his work, you, you uh, will find yourself looking at more of that. He did win the National Book Award for Young, uh, young People's uh, Literature. Um, on page 128 of Roberts, uh, we were introduced to uh, Alexei already in his uh, great short work, This Is What It Means to Say Phoenix, Arizona, and there's more biographic information that we've spoken about uh, there. Now let's turn to this poem and appreciate the voice, the tone, the in-your-face tone of this text. Let's pay attention as well to organization and pay attention to the ways in which organization matters in this text. On the Amtrak from Boston to New York City. The white woman across the aisle from me says, Look, look at all the history. That house on the hill there is over 200 years old. As she points out the window past me into what she has been taught I have learned little more about American history during my few days back east than what I expected, and far less of what we should all know of the tribal stories whose architecture is 15,000 years older than the corners of the house that sits museumed on the hill. Walden Pond, the woman on the train asks, did you see Walden Pond? And I don't have a cruel enough heart to break her own by telling her there are five Walden Ponds on my little reservation out west and at least a hundred more surrounding Spokane, the city I pretended to call my home. Listen, I could have told her, I don't give a shit about Walden. I know the Indians were living stories around that pond before Walden's grandparents were born, and before his grandparents' grandparents were born. I'm tired of hearing about Don fucking Henley saving it, too, because that's redundant. If Don Henley's brothers and sisters and mothers and father hadn't come here in the first place, then nothing would need to be saved. But I didn't say a word to the woman about Walden Pond because she smiled so much and seemed delighted that I thought to bring her an orange juice back from the food car. I respect elders of every color. All I really did was eat my tasteless sandwich, drink my Diet Pepsi, and nod my head whenever the woman pointed out another little piece of her country's history while I as all Indians have done since this war began, made plans for what I would do and say the next time somebody from the enemy thought I was one of them. Now, a few poems that we read in 303 are so compelling, so in-your-face compelling as this one. Let's pay attention right away to the brilliant way this poem is constructed in its organization. Notice it. We will have four line stanzas all the way until the final line, which will stand out by itself. The alienation that is obviously being represented throughout the poem is here iconically represented for us. Notice the power of the idea of history, the backwards looking, the lack of knowledge of history that so many of us, of course, 
you know, possess or don't possess. We might say as well, there is the futuristic. But the line that I think in this poem that's often misunderstood the most is at line 28, 29, 30. I respect elders of every color. Now, I think this is central to the 2A message here. This is a message of learning how to live with ignorance, learning how to live with rage, learning how to live with history. This is what it means to be an American. And from the very beginnings of our conversations together, back to LearnStrong.net in the junior folder as we talked about what it means to be an American. Obviously part of being an American is to have to accept one's history, to be confused, frustrated, angered, raged about one's history, while at the same time respectful, proud of American history. We've got to be able to do both if we're going to live in this world together. And this poem, I think, speaks to both sides of that. There is the internal dialogue, what I'd really like to say, and then there's the external, not so much dialogue, but more actions. Let me give you an orange juice. Let me, uh, let me move on. Notice the alienation that's represented in the last four-line stanza. Um, that is to say, her country's history. The war, right, that is referenced as well. And then, of course, the plans for the next time someone assumes that I am one of their own. This notion that there is never a way to have full sense of assimilation. Of course, another major message here is cultural understanding and appreciation is, is hard. It's complicated, let's say. At 2B, we pointed out the brilliance of that final line of alienation. At 3A, so many titles come to mind. Of course, Kofer's uh, American History comes to mind for us, as does uh, Leslie Mormon Silko's uh, Lullaby, as well as Almanac of the Dead, as well as Storyteller. Basically, everything that Leslie Mormon Silko has written, she, of course, in our Room 303, is one of the most important of the writers that will remind us that there's so much of history that we don't know or we should know and have forgotten, right? Of course, texts like Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, as well as Chief Joseph's I Will Fight No More Forever come to mind as well. Finally, at 3B, tough questions, right? This is a poem that people are often angered by. And I would suggest, instead of being angered by a poem like this, let's be respectful of a poem like this and challenge ourselves to ask some important 3B questions what do you still, the first of two, what do you still need to understand about American history that you don't understand about American history? No matter who you are, no matter what kind of a reader you are, whether you're American or non-American, it doesn't matter. How about this one? Can we be honest? And why is it so hard to be honest about our history? We think, of course, with a poem like this about the um, Trail of Tears, the Cherokee Trail of Tears. Can we be honest about our history and at the same time be patriotic and proud of our history? See, I, I'm going to make the argument as I've made many, many times in 303. We not only can do that, I would argue we must do that if we are going to continue to grow and evolve as a country, if we're going to grow and evolve as, as, as people, right? Well, I hope that our study here has turned you on to more of the Lexi stuff. Really, really remarkable, very important writer-poet for us. Thank you.